Changing what we know about Jupiter. Ever wondered why our solar system stands out from the crowd, escaping a fate that happens to 20 to 30% of similar planetary constellations? That's right, most often the central star swallows up its surrounding planets, but here we are still intact. So what's our secret? The answer might lie with our heavyweight neighbor, Jupiter. It's the largest planet in our solar system and perhaps the oldest. Some scientists theorize that before Earth, Venus, and Mercury even existed, other planets got eaten by Jupiter, paving the way for our current system. But here's a curveball. What if Jupiter wasn't born here? Before moving toward the thrilling possibilities, don't forget to like and subscribe for more exciting content like this. As we know, Jupiter is a gas giant in our solar system that mainly consists of gases like hydrogen and helium. People started studying Jupiter as early as the 17th century, but many mysteries remain. For example, Jupiter's famous feature, the Great Red Spot, or GRS, is a big point of debate among scientists. They're unsure why it's red, how long it's been there, or even how it was formed. Jupiter spins around really fast, about nine hours for each rotation. This creates huge and powerful storms that can reach 335 miles per hour. The Great Red Spot is one of these storms, and it's been there for over 300 years. But here's the exciting part. The GRS is getting smaller. Back in the 1800s, it was about 25,500 miles wide, but now it's just a bit bigger than Earth's diameter, which is 10,250 miles. Scientists aren't sure why it's shrinking, but they think it might be related to unknown activities in Jupiter's atmosphere. Another mystery of the GRS is its red color. Scientists from NASA suggest that a gas called ammonium hydrosulfide could turn into sulfur when exposed to sunlight, giving the spot its red color. Also, according to a researcher named Amy Simon, the storm's color gets more intense when the wind speeds up. Besides hydrogen and helium, Jupiter's atmosphere has heavy elements like nitrogen, argon, and xenon. But these elements can only form at low temperatures, which makes scientists wonder if Jupiter was born somewhere else and then moved closer to the sun. Could it be that Jupiter was born four times farther from the sun, mixed with these heavy elements, and then moved closer to complete its formation? This question, like many others about Jupiter, is still unanswered. But understanding Jupiter's potential migration requires examining how gas giants like Jupiter form. Gas giants come into existence much in the same way as terrestrial planets, but with a few distinctions. After a star is formed from dust and gas clouds, the remaining material forms a rotating ring around the star, called the protoplanetary disk, the building block for planets. Despite existing briefly on a cosmic scale up to 10 million years, the disk, composed of 99% gas and just 1% dust, initiates planet formation as dust particles collide and stick together to form larger bodies known as planetesimals. Depending on the available material, these planetesimals gain mass, progressing into planets, asteroids, or moons. Terrestrial planets with solid surfaces are typically formed closer to the star, due to the star's radiation's inability to push heavier elements, like stone and metal, far away. In contrast, gas giants form farther from the star, because radiation can push gas to greater distances. However, having a lot of gas isn't enough for a body to become a gas giant. These planets also need a substantial solid core to attract gas. Astrophysicists Kobayashi and Tanaka suggest that gas giants could amass such large cores due to pebbles being drawn into the solar system by Neptune's orbit and ice particles pushed out by radiation acting as a building material for the core. Gas giants could also form outside their planetary system and migrate into narrower orbits a theory known as the Grand Track Hypothesis. According to the hypothesis, proposed by Kevin Walsh from the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Jupiter may have originated much farther from the Sun and slowly accrued mass as it migrated toward the Sun. This hypothesis also suggests that this migration may have contributed to the formation of the asteroid belt and the smaller mass of Mars. A study from Lund University echoes this idea suggesting that Jupiter may have originated as an icy asteroid in the solar system's outer regions, accumulating mass equivalent to Earth within two to three million years and moving closer to the Sun. 
Researcher Sho Shibata explains that Jupiter was probably about 20 astronomical units from the Sun when the solar system was first formed. Influenced by gravity, Jupiter moved towards the Sun, following a path filled with material essential for its development and accumulating gas still orbiting the newborn Sun. This journey, taking about 700,000 years, may have eventually placed Jupiter in Mars' current location before moving to its present position in the solar system. Evidence supports Walsh's hypothesis from a group of asteroids known as Jupiter Trojans. These asteroids precede and follow Jupiter in its orbit, with the group leading Jupiter being twice as large as the one trailing it. Scientists at the University of Lund in Sweden, using computer simulations, concluded that this peculiar dispersion was likely caused by Jupiter's inward migration. Jupiter's migration would have had significant impacts on our solar system. For instance, Mars could have been larger than Earth without Jupiter's intervention. When Jupiter moved closer to the Sun, it may have absorbed or scattered the material intended for Mars, directing it towards Earth and Venus instead. Jupiter's influence also potentially impacted the asteroid belt, located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. According to the Grand Tack Hypothesis, Jupiter's gravitational forces may have disrupted the uniting of planetesimals, resulting in the breakdown of what could have been another planet. Jupiter may have also scattered a significant quantity of material during its migration, meaning that even without Jupiter's influence, the belt's mass would not be sufficient to form even a small planet similar to Mars. Undeniably, Jupiter's migration had profound and far-reaching effects on our solar system. Still perhaps the most remarkable, albeit less obvious, impact was the potential obliteration of the first-generation planets in our solar system. Oddly enough, our solar system lacks what other similar systems often have, super-Earths. These planets, larger than Earth, typically comprise a mixture of rock and gas. Astronomer Konstantin Batygin hints at the possibility that Jupiter may be responsible for this absence, theorizing that Jupiter's past migrations might have demolished those early planets. As assumed by Batygin, Jupiter's gravitational force, moving closely to the Sun before retreating to its current location, could have incited collisions among the forming planets. In essence, Jupiter might have set the conditions conductive to the birth of the planets we are familiar with today. However, the formation of planets like Mercury, Venus, and Earth took millions of years, a slow process from our perspective. This suggests they evolved from an already slightly exhausted proplanetary disk explaining their smaller size, sparse atmosphere, and the age discrepancy between outer and inner solar planets. Despite the destruction of the first planets and the hindered development of Mars appearing to be negative events, Jupiter's intervention might have had beneficial implications for us. The prevalent enigma concerning the vast water bodies on Earth may be attributable to Jupiter's migration. Since the high temperatures during Earth's formation could have vaporized all water, it's plausible that the water originally existed within the planet, but in insufficient quantities to cover 70% of the Earth's surface. Astronomer Phil Plate said Jupiter might have redirected small water-bearing asteroids towards Earth during migration. Moreover, these asteroids could have carried life-sustaining elements like amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, suggesting that Jupiter might have played a pivotal role in the genesis of life on Earth. Interestingly, Jupiter is a protective shield for Earth, altering the trajectories of hazardous asteroids and comets and absorbing potential threats like the 1.2-mile comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 that crashed into Jupiter in 1994. However, Jupiter doesn't always guard us. It can occasionally hurl asteroids our way, as professional Dante Horner from the University of Southern Queensland pointed out. But had Jupiter been smaller, our planet's risk of collisions with cosmic bodies would have drastically increased. Jupiter also subtly influences Earth's orbit, which is usually almost perfectly circular, but can be stretched into an elliptical shape due to Jupiter's gravitational pull. This deformation can lead to substantial climate changes, with considerably hotter summers and colder winters. Although this occurs infrequently, every 405,000 years, we are currently in the midst of one such cycle. Though the theory of Jupiter's migration remains speculative and calls for additional scientific exploration, it is widely believed that its absence would have drastically altered our solar system. The potential for life on Earth might have diminished or failed entirely without the influence of this gas giant. To validate the hypothesis of Jupiter's migration and delve deeper into our universe's origins, 
NASA launched the Lucy spacecraft in 2021. This mission seeks to examine the Trojan asteroids, potentially unearthing insights about the materials parent to our universe over 4 billion years ago. If you're fascinated by the mysteries of our solar system and cosmos, keep an eye out for the exciting discoveries that may arise from this mission and future ones. So hit the subscribe button and share it with others to join us on our journey through the wonders of space.